And we're going to put a marker right here for our awesome archive team. Let them know we're getting into the game. And before we tab over, I just want to say the spot screen has been updated and now it is accurate to the members of our party. And it looks so cool. Uh, take a good look at the splash screen. You'll be seeing it a lot tonight, uh, especially because we're kind of off script and we don't have an overlay yet. But we, what we do have is character art. We have character art. Oh, it's cut off a little bit. Hang on. I should have checked this beforehand. Can I sidle this over? Yes, I can. We will have a proper overlay, hopefully by next week's episode. But for tonight, we have character art and we're just going to we're just going to move right on with the story. We have our Hellriders. We met them in Session Zero, and we're going to jump right into the story today. Uh, not a lot of battle maps. Sorry about that. Uh, not a lot of encounters, and I don't have my music organized quite yet. We put this game together pretty quickly. We will have all of that as we go, and we'll be, we will, of course, be introducing more mechanics as we go as well. But for tonight, uh, if there's no objections, I'm just going to jump right in. And I think we we start with a top-down view of a rolling grassy plain. And we hear this deep, bassy thudding sound as a team of horsemen in like V formation, like a like a flock of geese, come thundering over this grass plain. We see them from from above. They're all wearing red and white. Um and um, the horses themselves look different and strange. They are, um, the, the main body of the horses is, as you would expect, they're, you know, varying shades and colors, but the manes, hooves, and tails of these horses are all this, like, glowing white gold energy color as these are magically summoned uh, celestial um, mounts of, of the Hellriders, and also uh, keeping up with this V formation, and in fact, in part of this V formation, we see a, um, like a spider, uh, craboid, um, metal and stone construct, uh, dashing along with the group. Um, in the distance, we see um, like low wooden buildings and squared off farmland and the camera pans up to this like little village coming into view and then we smash cut right behind the riders uh, and uh, who's at the head of the column? Who is who is the the middle of the V? Who's the tip of the spear in our in our group here? Guys? Is it is anyone else hearing Kit? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was muted, so. Yes, yeah, I can I hear Kit just fine. Uh, I can't hear him. Uh unmute Nix. I don't understand why. Could somebody on, tell could, could somebody tell Gamzy to, to unmute Nix? Unmute Nix, Gamzy. Well that's the thing. I have Nix unmuted. I can't I, I just, there's nothing coming through. Try leaving and rejoining? I might have to. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, never mind. Here comes the fucking samurai. I guess goodbye. <laughs> that timing, though. <laughs> Man, and I was going to be like, Duncan's at the head of the column. Uh, or Duncan, rather. That's going to be confusing. I'm already doing it. <sighs> so, while we wait for, for Duncan to come back in, uh, who is on either side of, of, of Duncan? Uh, Clunger would probably be on his left. Okay. So then Denke would be on his right? Makes sense yeah, to me. Either. Yeah, either Denke or Tordak. So, so why don't one of you um, like describe your characters for us? I guess Frost, you spoke up first. Why don't you describe uh, Calendria for us? She is a very, uh, very tall, large lady. Uh, very, very like snow white hair. 
uh, very very tan skin. Like it looks like she'd be a she's someone that's been outside all the time. Dressed in uh, very comfortable like robes, and uh, she's got a shield strapped to her back with a wooden club, just kind of you know like hanging on her belt as they ride. Mm -hmm. And her uh, probably the most striking thing is that her eyes are like a solid amethyst color. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, Denke. Denke is not quite as tall as Calandria. He's a, a half-elf with flowing dark hair, uh, his uh, cape flowing behind him in the wind as he rides, uh, in studded leather armor uh, with a rapier at his side. Okay. And then bringing up the, the far end of the, of the V formation, we have Tordek, who we will hopefully uh, get to hear from in a minute as uh, Tordek's player is running a little bit behind, uh, but should be along momentarily. And then we have also the mech. Uh, so, um, uh, Rev, why don't you describe your, uh, your clockwork for us? Um, so, um, I, think, I think Rev's, the clockwork's movement is, since we don't have our scout with her, I think Rev is acting as a satellite since he's much faster than the group. Okay. Um, not so much part of the V, because it kind of breaks the V a bit. Um, but it's, it, it's weird, right? It looks like it should be something a little more futuristic, but it's, you, there's the clicking of gears as it moves. Mm -hmm. There's, um... How is the, how is the, the robot moving so quickly? Is it, is it just spinning its legs real hard or does it like retract the legs and pull out skis or something um i think i think it's got quite a stride okay yeah like like those legs are much longer um than it seems because they're really close to the body in the depiction true i i, I think i think it's got quite a stride okay um but in in addition to to its legs, there there's this blue glow um, from some of the inside that might be circuitry, might be arcane, arcane sigils. But there's also a cannon on the top, as well as a glass, f um, a, a reinforced like gla crystal frame that's um. Almost opaque, but not quite from the outside. I was going outside. to say, can we see the pilot? Yeah, I think you can, and it's a very tiny Kenku. Okay. At a set of controls. Okay, totally. And and yeah, and, and who's who's at the tip of the spear now that you're back, Gamzee? Why don't you describe Duncan for us? If Gamzee is back, he rejoined. He might not be back, though. Hello. Hello. Gamzee? Can you, can you hear the kitsune? Yeah, I can hear it. What's going on? You're really, really quiet, dude. You are super quiet. Oh, hang on. Let me... Hello? Hello. There we go. Wouldn't be a D and D without technical difficulties. No, it would not. Why don't you describe Duncan for us? Okay. So, at the at the tip of the of the spear, the V, whatever, mm -hmm. is uh, a guy in a uh, white and red plate armor. Mm -hmm. Got a long sword strapped to his back. Um, shield, as a kite shield laid over top of it. He's he's definitely on the taller side, but I mean everyone is on a horse. Fair. Um, through the arm, with with the armor on, he's certainly nothing of note. Um, I mean, he's a dude in full armor. That's noteworthy. As I, I was gonna say, as far as someone in full armor goes, mm. 
from from the way you're talking, the the camera doesn't see what we see on his character art. Right. Okay. Um. I, I'm trying to I'm trying to think what to what to go into here. I mean that that can be it if that's all you want to do. For now. Okay. And then our our last horseman right here is a dwarf with a gigantic shield as big as he is, uh, also in some plate mail armor, um, bringing up one of the sides. Uh, yeah, you guys just like ride up on this on this village, and I think we we get the shot over Duncan's shoulder. Um, we hear uh, we hear like a faint hissing sound like a noise, um, and then uh, white smoke begins to billow from the town square, and then we hear another one, and red smoke uh, begins to billow from, like, the other side of the town. What do you do, Duncan? You remind me what that means. Uh, I can't, but your scout can. Uh... White is um white is entrance and red is avoid. So I gotta I gotta I gotta think to, to word this right. Mm -hmm. It's probably raise raise one arm off of the 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 handle or the reins. Reins, thank you. Mm -hmm. Raise one hand uh, one hand off of the reins and point towards the white smoke. And if that's not the dead ahead route, start turning towards yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think yeah, like in in tight formation, like Rev was or the the mech was like orbiting the group. Uh, and he comes into the side of the sphere or spear, and then all five riders like turn slightly, and yeah, convene on the 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 town square. You come to a deserted village. There is no one around. There is no sounds of like life. No people moving about. Uh, no farm animals. Uh, it's a muddy ground. It's rained relatively recently, and as you're riding up you see uh, a figure stand up from the roof of, uh, of the stone church, the only stone building uh, around. Uh, would you like to uh, introduce yourself, Starlight? Uh, sure. Uh, you would see a tabaxi that has markings of Siamese um, but is technically more fluffy okay and she would be holding her bow and her hood over her head try not to shake your microphone I am sorry no worries. <laughs> um but yeah and she'd just be standing up at the top of the church looking down at the group you're not gonna you're not gonna go report to your commander she will once she sees them come to come close she will stand she'll probably jump down okay. and stand and um you know salute. do the uh salute yeah, yeah exactly uh so so duncan as you like pull your your horses up and and your team comes up around you um, before Starlight utters a word, you see that she's bleeding. Like, she's got blood all over her, her robes and her cloak. Um, she's, like, she's dressed it, but she's very obviously wounded. As soon as she's come down, as soon as we're, uh, grouped, so to say. Yep. It's... First things first, Tordek, get that wound, check them over, covered in blood. Aye, Aye Commander. Commander. Once, you, once that's been dressed, 
I want the, I want your full report, Starlight. <clears throat> yes, sir. So, Tordak, you get off your horse and you, you go over to Starlight. And uh, so, you know, you didn't, you, you were a little bit late getting in, Cookie, no big deal. But why don't you take a moment to describe Tordak, because I don't think I did him justice. Yeah. So, uh, not, uh, not quite, quite the shortest short stature, stature of the group. No. Uh, he, he is quite noticeably a dwarf. Mm. Dwarvish boy, sort of blackish brown, uh, mohawk and beard with, like, gold, uh, knot holders. Nice. Okay. And on the side of his, his, uh, battle ram actually oh you have a ram was, i forgot about that my mistake yeah no you're fine is a shield that is just about as big as him emblazed with our uh, our symbol your ram is also a a celestial summon though i think right yes yeah okay so so you get down and, and you approach uh starlight can you make a medicine check for me please yes i can Do-do-do-do. Okay, um, she got bit. She got bit by a large animal. She is, like, not only is she covered in blood, but mechanically she's also bloody. She took a big hit. Mm-hmm. I think he, he's... Going, going back, back over towards, towards the ram, pulling, pulling out one of his healer's kits, okay. and then while uh, uh, stitching her up. All right, right lass, what done got, got ya? I may have got in contact with a hostile contact that way. May have been vampiric. Stop. Yeah, I was gonna say. At her. I was gonna say. What? 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 Did, what does the group do when when Starlight says this? Anybody can jump in. I think Dink is uh, Dink is uh, scanning the uh, what they can see uh, of the. Uh, commune from their vantage point uh, just looking for any signs yeah you're standing around the well in the center of town and there's nobody here i, ha I have i have a question yes okay. is this is the sound that i make distorted by the mech yes <laughs> so a very uh person inside a mech type thing <sighs> <laughs> you need a cup I do need a cup. Fuck. <laughs> I don't have a cup. Ugh. So the Kenku sighs. Duncan, you heard that. Like, you heard Starlight. Uh, whether or not you heard Rev is up to you. Right. So. Do you want to tell me why you decided to attempt contact with something? I understand it was part of your orders, but sincerely, you should have met with back up with us if something was going to be that severe. Where is it? I have neutralized it. I'd need Tordek to confirm if it's dead. All right. And what's the word on the town at large? Uh, it's devastating. I've seen signs of... Uh, well, as you can tell, the civil... Civils... The Civilians. Civilian presence is compromised. I... can only imagine probable abduction. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not doing the voice quite right. 
I mean, you, it'll take a few episodes for everybody to, to grow into their voices. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I do like that um, Nightmare Tokami has kind of like um, like a Duchess from the Aristocats thing going on. <laughs> Thank you. It sounds like she's about to go, darling, at any given moment. It's great. I think Denke walks up near uh, the commander and says, well, the good news is, commander, my research seems to have been accurate. The bad news is, my research seems to have been accurate. Take inspiration, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm writing all of that down. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> you should be writing so most of this good. down. I, I am. I'm trying, but things are going so fast. Ah! You'll get used to it. I'll really argue with that, can we? There you go. Ah, fuck. I'm gonna have to rewatch these VODs. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not so easy, is it, Kanku Boy? If anybody's wondering <sighs> what Nightfall is flailing about, by the way, Kenku cannot speak. They can only mimic what they've heard before. And so, for most of these sessions, Nightfall is going to be scrambling to write down what was said so that he can talk later. What did you say, Gamzee? I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to get the good news, bad news. Uh, also, I now have good news and bad news. <laughs> it was, it was, well, there's no arguing that. Thank you. Or, sorry, there's no arguing that, I suppose. Thank so. you. Dodek. The information that the bite was vampiric. What's our threat? What What do you think our relative threat is? Make For a religion star, check, Tordak. Do 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 religion. Ooh, that lag! My internet's not behaving with me. Okay. It should be non-existent. You're within light of i don't remember what it's called the companion i believe that's what you called it yeah <laughs> yeah like you're within the light of it there shouldn't be any undead during daylight hours by the way it's about five o'clock um maybe we should get the full report <laughs> from starlight first <laughs> well commander as i see it as long as we got the companion shining on us, we should be fine. What I want to know is about it's about Starlight's health. Is that bite going to be a problem? You wouldn't have called it as vampiric, looking looking at the wound. Like she doesn't seem infected. She just looked like she got bit. I don't think it should be a problem, sir, but. We should definitely keep an eye. Alright. You're certain. Whenever you're ready, Star. I... do believe we have two hostiles to deal with. Eight healing to you, Starlight. Ooh. Nice. Continue. The floor is yours. Uh, because, well, you see, I made positive contact with the uh, vampiric part. The village shows signs of a different hostile. And it seems they're very intellectual small and have the ability to climb uh, 
the church is a safe place, but from what I've looked around in the village, if we fortify it, they're known to be more forceful. And it seems like standard ordinance does not work with them. Do you have something to, to show for that? She takes out a knife that she found as I found this from one of the Oh, I think my internet went out completely. Hold that thought. Yep, I disconnected. One second. Do, do, check do, do, one, do. check two. Check complete. Yeah. Uh, start back at from one of the. I found this in one of the. I found this from... Following a trail of one of the people that may have been abducted. So Starlight produces just like a, a chef's knife, one of those wide bladed uh, knives. But the, the tip of the blade is folded almost back to the handle. There's no blood on it. Do you think this was used on our target, then? Well, considering the house it came from, the person was willing to rip their fingernails out, then get taken by whatever this was. <sighs> Never a good way. Alright. Mm. If you say the civilian presence is compromised, then I'll better bet it's likely going to be searching the fields for the ruins entrance and getting a move on. This, the description she uttered of the uh, uh, hostile contact or hostile um, that was intelligent and could climb and something else, does that ring a bell to Denke? Uh, make a nature check. Small, smart, and can climb. Can easily climb. Um, it rings a bell, but it's not local. You're, Where you're, would it be you're, from? You're looking at orcs, goblins, to a degree, kobolds, or maybe deep gnomes, but it's not typical threats to this area. Not typical threat to this area, but like you, you need a positive ID on something. I mean, after all, something bit Star. Like, there's got to be contact somewhere. What do you guys want to do? Well, let's let's take a minute, Commander, and let's go over your mission parameters since we haven't done that. Right. Let me find those. Boop. So we were sent on Operation Ash and Shadow. Mm hmm. I, I assume that's like Ash apostrophe N Shadow. Like uh, Ash and Shadow. No, it's Ashen. Oh, it is Ashen. Yeah. Okay. By the by the way that it's been said several times, I thought it was Ashen Snow. No. Ashen my bad. Shadow. Okay. My bad. No worries. I'm gonna change that in my notes. Okay. Um 
The operations theater was an agricultural com commune roughly four days outside of El Torel, the site we are currently in. Most assumedly, based on well, reports. Current reports and the current factors presented to us about this place. Yes. The, the, the briefing was that farmers... Well, farmers are always digging in the fields of the dead. Which um, is the big farmland plains northwest of El Toro, where you're from. So named because they're always digging up bodies. Right. However, apparently there were reports that they recently dug up an ancient, seemingly elvish ruin. Um, and we were... We were deployed without a uh, an immediate recon. Um, Why? What I have, what I have down as the reason is that Marshal Ulder Ravengard of the Flaming Fist had arrived within Eltelgard the day of the report, and any slights to the reputation of the city, church, or the Hellriders will not be well received. I assume because of the tentative peace between Flaming Fist and Hellriders. Well, tentative peace between Baldur's Gate and Elturel. Right. Um. Effectively the same statement. A eh, little bit bigger than what you said, but yeah. Um, the the parameters of the mission were to insert into the operations theater, secure the commune and the ruins, and any asset, any assets, and then neutralize any hostile presence. Uh, secondary objective was to secure and maintain the health and well-being of the, of the Elta Guard citizens within the operations theater. How's that going for you? That's real frickin' minty, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yep, mm-hmm, good. Um, and special regulation due to the presence of the marshal and his pro propensity to involve himself in military facilities. Uh, I do not know how to say that word. Etheric. Etheric silence must be maintained until debriefing and an Elturel actual. So you can't call for backup, you can't report in. Like, you're on your own. Okay. A simple enough task for the Valkyries. Yeah, it should be. So what do you want to do, Chief? First things first. First things first. For... I can't get the voice. First things first. Starlight, Dordek, I want you to confirm I want you to confirm the neutralization of that hostile merchant. Pull any details from uh, from the bodies you can if it is dead. In the meantime, I want to begin I want the rest of us to begin a sweep of the field to see if we can find an entrance to the ruins. Then K, okay, if you want to begin, if you want to do a quick over, so we, oh, if you want to do a quick search of the town, see if you can find any additional information, we can go ahead. Yes, Commander, on it. Okay. So Kalindria, Rev, and Duncan are fanning out to try to find the ruins. Tordek and Starlight are going to go deal with the hostel, and Denki is exploring the town. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Let's yeah. st let's stick with Tordek and Starlight for now. Uh, Starlight, where do you lead Tordek? So I, Starlight would probably lead Tordek from the house that she was following the trail, and then to the group of trees. So out on the other side of town, through a couple of fields, to a small copse of trees where. A tree has recently fallen, um, mm -hmm. and there is uh, not a substantial amount of blood on the ground, Tordek. 
and uh, that tree has fallen on a man. Uh, he appears to be human, um, early to mid 50s, a little bit pudgy. He's wearing um, church vestments, but not the full regalia of service. Um, he does not appear to be armed uh, presently. Uh, I know, Starlight, I mentioned that he had a weapon, but he's moved. So unless you point out the weapon, I'm not going to mention it. Um, and he's currently pinned under the tree with a young, like, tree branch sticking out of his chest and blood all over his vestments. He is not moving. That's certainly one way of taking care of a threat. Uh, quick thinking, the tree was about to fall, so I just shot my arrow and uh, let the tree fall on him. If you will, you shot your shot. I'm gonna take that for later and save it in my back pocket, thanks. Get in the <laughs> fucking mech, Shinji. <laughs> okay. So... First steps first. Mm -hmm. This is supposedly... a vampiric being. According to Starlight. Correct. I'm going to cast Detect Poison and Disease. Uh... Why? Sorry, I'm not sure I follow your logic. Assumedly, vampirism would be a disease. That's a curse, actually. It's mm, a curse and okay. a disease, but it's mostly a curse. And you can cast it if you want to. I mean, Tordek would know that it is a, mostly a curse, but also could be a disease, so I don't see any reason not to. Okay, uh, go ahead and link your spell. Doop. For the duration, you can sense the presence and location of poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases within 30 feet. If you also identify what kind of poison, poisonous creature, or disease in each case. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, and one thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Okay. Um, so this just tells you yes, no. Oh, it tells you the kind of poison, poison, creature, or disease in this case. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, this dude, this dude is, is, is pinging faintly vampiric. Okay. Very faintly. Also, he's Faint. not dead. I mean, Faint, faintly is still a confirmation. He's dead because he's undead, but he's not dead. Right. Well, you're certainly right about the vampiric bit of it, loss. Hmm. Oh, Starlight is not painting as vampiric, by the way. And to the plus side, neither are ye. <sighs> That's a relief. Hey, quite a good one. Though. Now that it's confirmed the vampiric, uh, it's not quite hostile neutralized. Uh, uh, respectfully, no. He's neutralized, but he's not dead. Make a look okay. check. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Not great. Um. He's got a stake through his chest, and according to, to folklore, that does something, and he's not moving. He's not even growling. He's just 
Mm. Kind of frozen. So, so. <laughs> retracting that previous statement. I... Well, you got him. You certainly got him. <laughs> but... I'm not exactly sure at all. Keep forever. I think Starlight just shrugs her shoulders and like just says, "I did the best I could with the resources that I had." You did great. Right. You, you neutralized I'm, them. I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying. I need the guy that pulls his ass. <laughs> this this might not be permanent, and now. Uh, I need to uh, work my magic, so to say. <laughs> Incoming sacred flame. <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, perfect. I mean, he automatically fails his deck save because he's paralyzed. So a couple of casts of that, and he burns away to ash. Right. Now, total confirmation. Nick, what's your passive perception, Tordek? Uh, 13. Cool. Uh, there's a morning star just, like, laying in the grass about six feet toward the base of the tree. Uh, and not a morning star. I'm sorry, a mace. What's the difference, was... Spikes? You said it was a Roman-style diamond-flanged mace. Correct. Hmm. Uh, presumably, I still have the detection going because it lasts ten minutes. It's not the... poisonous. Okay, cool. Gonna walk over and inspect it. It's a, it's a mace. It's a beat stick. It's a little bit better made than a farming implement, but I mean, it's not military. Right. Do you, do you have any plans with this here, Lass? Mm. Shakes her head. In these situations, you never know what might be useful. He's gonna pick it up. Okay. Yeah, you, you can add a, just a, a standard maze to inventory. It's cool. like El Torellin make. Like, you could probably spot the maker's mark. El Tul Garden make. You know what I mean. Mm hmm. Alright. Denke, what are you doing? I think Denke is going to go straight to the church first and foremost. Okay. Uh, it's the, it looks like it would have been the place that anyone would have fled for safety make if an, they had the make chance. A, make a, a perception check. I stammered there because I waffled through four different skills before landing on perception. Like a di <laughs> It's a church. It, it's a church. Nobody's in here. Um, everything that you expect to see in a church is present. I, I guess he'll do a quick quick sweep of the houses, uh, see if there's any that are more disturbed than others. What are you looking for, specifically? I think uh, looking for either uh, anything and anything that the, um, may have indicated uh, what took the citizens or okay. why they were taken. <laughs> Make a, an investigation check. You should be good at these. There we go. Yeah, so look into the, the houses. This takes a bit, mind you. But look into the houses, you see um, some ashy footprints on the ceiling of one of the, the farmhouses. 
um, a a f a three forward, one backward, uh, toed reptilian foot. Um, you see, uh, claw marks on one of the windows. Uh, you see a, a house that seem seemingly has been ransacked, and some of the furniture has been destroyed. Um, in that house, you find an untouched but stout axe next to the bed. Um, you find uh, rem like charred, dusty remains of something in an oven in a different house. Uh, and you also find the barn, which is devoid of animals but covered in viscera. Do any of these signs match one of the uh, descriptors that came to mind uh, after Star's first report? No. The the small footprints or the small like reptilian footprints lead you to kobolds, but kobolds don't do this. They have no reason to. Kobolds would it's... steal more than abduct, and nothing's been stolen. Like, like you can find valuables if you if you want them. Denki doesn't seem to sort it... though. Oh no, it is definitely looks more animal in nature more mm -hmm. than anything. For sure, but animals don't take prisoners. Exactly, it's a conundrum. So, Kalindria, Rev, and Duncan, you guys fanned out into the fields. What are you doing? Um, mostly doing a... Like, a, a... A... The word, the word, the word. A, a sweep? Trying to Lean see into your mic, dude. Mostly a, uh, doing a sweep, trying to see if we can find the described entrance of uh you say we didn't you fan out yes what is duncan doing i think the duncan's also uh Lean searching because i don't know what's going on <laughs> i i think duncan is also searching with the other like because the, this this place has like <laughs> What's what's a what's a way to describe it or describe this question? Um, Squared off fields. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's it's probably each of us is taking one. Okay. Uh, Kalindria, Rev, what are you two doing? Either of you can speak up. Um, I I, I think. Rev is making arcing sweeps with the mech. Mm -hmm. Um, he can go a bit faster, just kind of like, you, you know how a paper fan has the the curved arc. Mm -hmm. He's he starts in one corner and does that until he reaches the other corner. Okay, just arc back and forth, searching. Calendra, I think she's more riding around like the perimeters. I'm on your horse. Mm hmm Okay, go ahead. Just to try and, you know, if there's something that's gonna be spooked by her and make a run for it, it'll help basically uh, shake them out of the area, and it's also letting her sweep faster around it. Okay. Uh, why don't you make a perception check, Duncan and Rev make investigation checks? Okay. Yeah, it's on brand. Yeah. Um, could I could I use guidance for this? I don't see why not. Oh yeah. Hang on a sec. I don't know if it's gonna roll the guidance automatically. It does. Okay. Oh. Oh, I wish I had that advantage. So yeah, so Rev. Uh huh. You find believe it or not, you rolled the highest. Um uh -oh. you find a <laughs> like five foot by 20 foot rectangle just a hole in the middle of a soy field 
not the middle, but like middle left quadrant. So if I started in like, uh, it's wherever I started, I probably found it in another corner. No, it's not in the corner. It's like, hang on. Boop, 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 boop. It's like here. Ah, so if I started here, yeah. it would have taken me a, quite a while to find it. Yes. Hmm. Well, you, 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 you find a hole. What do you do? Oh, uh, where is the commander? You don't know. Wait, no. Wait, wait, no. Uh, I, I, I touch the earring of sending because we all have those, right? Yes. Mm hmm. Uh, let me look at my lines. Hang on. Yep. I, I have a line for this. I know you do. I gave it to you. Oh, one of the ones you gave me? No, I was thinking of a different one. I went, whatever you want to use, man. Uh, I, I've been sorting them in between, so... Uh, in between the scenes. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? Um... And who are you broadcasting? Like, are you, like, I'm assuming you're not broadcasting into the mech. You're broadcasting to like the rest of the Valkyries. Yes. But I have to um, ask. I, I'm going to go the right this moment directly to Duncan and Kalindria because we're, we're the ones searching right now. True. And if Duncan wants to relay that, um, let me find it. I'm looking for the report one. I have the re I have the report for you. How does how does Denke talk? I haven't heard him talk a lot yet. So a little more the the same uh general accent as uh Duncan, but a little more genteel and refined. So it would be something like I have the report for you. I have the report for you. So, Duncan, you hear Denke come over your, your comm. He makes a drone noise following it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Duncan, make an insight check. Can't hear you. Alrighty. There you go. No, that was... I, I, I purposefully leaned the little mic away from me that time, because I, I still got to use gotcha. an entrance phrase for his voice. Gotcha. So, uh, that is... Yeah. I mean, you have advantage to, to understand Rev. Yeah, so so that was Rev. What you got for me, Rev? Yeah, uh, this 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 time, in, in, in Star's voice. I, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> the way is clear, but be on your guard. That was actually surprisingly good. Mm -hmm. I, I had my mic muted because I was laughing. <laughs> I, uh... Should I, should I roll my insight on no, that one you don't, again? You no, don't, you don't have to. Like, you rolled, you understand the conversation. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. It's good to hear. I'm writing that one down. You should probably also write down what have you got for me, Rev. I'm giving, I'm giving, him a, I'm giving you a chance to write that down before I give Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frantically Listen, typing. <laughs> Listen, I'm slow. Listen, I'm slow as fuck too. I understand, man. I'm I'm with you. 
keeps strong together. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the one playing the Kenku this time. Um, right? I, I, oh, I, I love playing Kenku, but also fuck playing Kenku. Fuck and or that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you okay. have done this to yourself, buddy. You ready? Okay. Go ahead. So is it safe to assume there's no clear heat in the area then? Uh, fuck. Hang on. One of the first lines you have is applicable here. Uh, I have rearranged my sheet heavily. Hang on. <laughs> I know you have affirmative on your sheet, boy. I was I was half expecting Nightfall to just suddenly go cold, cold, cold. <laughs> I, 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 I rearranged them and I have that. I have a section for responses now. I know you have affirmative on your list. I do. I'm looking at it. I, I got it. Uh, fuck, what voice was it? Was it as a group? Uh, you no. didn't give me a voice for it. I you did not give, give me a voice, voice for it. So make one up. It's whatever. You, you have to do the same thing every time, though. So Affirmative. I'm gonna I'm gonna widen the channel to everyone. Yep. Revs found our entrance point. I want everyone to reconvene at the church once you're once you're done with what I've what I've gave you. Right. Yeah, we we could we could crossfade everybody being in the church. The sun is setting on the horizon now. Uh, Rev has found our entrance point. I'm taking that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, and my internet just completely died. I gotta wait for my Discord to come back. I've been fighting with this for several months, as many people can tell you, and uh, it's been worse today than it usually is. But uh, we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna try to fill some time before it comes back on. Uh, I think the Valkyries can still hear me over the phone, but I can't hear them. We we've been taking steps as best as possible to uh to alleviate some of these internet issues but uh they still crop up and if my internet dies completely like it seems to have done there's very very little that i can do uh, i'll be back as soon as i can um in the meantime uh hope you guys are enjoying the show uh this show in particular if you're uh if you're watching it later on than when it is uh set to premiere uh is made possible by, by patreon uh, our patreon patrons uh, wanted a exclusive decisive action game, and so hell to pay is my answer. As I said, we have an overlay and character cards and a Discord overlay and music and hopefully functioning internet all coming uh, at some point. But uh, as of right now, all I can do is uh, work with what I've got. And right now, ah, eh, yep, my internet is is dying completely. Here's hoping that it comes back sooner rather than later. But it is. Uh, it's completely gone. If it takes too long, I'm going to have to uh, cut the show. It's a recording. Anyway, cut the show and then come back once it's fixed. Uh, do some, uh, do some hopefully, editing magic and, uh, and go from there. <sighs> In the meantime, I do hope that everybody is uh, liking these characters. The, uh, the art is fantastic, as you can, uh, as you can see. Uh, we've got uh, from... Uh, left to right uh, on your screen, just in case uh, it wasn't clear so far. We've got uh, Calendria Willow Soul, uh, Denke, Denke Velenthor, Rev the Kinku and his mech clockwork, Tordak Gold Fury, Bathed in Starlight the Tabaxi, and of course Duncan Reeves, our commander of Valkyrie Squad. These guys are super cool, and I cannot wait to show, share this story uh, with you all. And I'm hoping that I can get connected again and uh, and hear from, from our friendos. Uh, my internet came back on, but it's not letting me connect to the voice call, which means it's still not where it needs to be. Come on, internet. Work with me. Please? Link shit or not? Oh, oh! I heard that. Hi, Nightfall. Hi. Something's up. Link shit or not? Yeah, well, pretty much. Uh, I'm assuming so you. Welcome. 
I'm assuming you guys heard all of that. Yes, yes, okay. we heard every bit yes. of it. Cool. Uh, so, uh, he just stepped away to go get food while this was going on. For worst timing ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Uh, does anybody want to have any conversations as the, the sun is setting and you're reconvened in the church? Don't everybody speak up at once now. Mm. Um, I don't have any conversations to start. I'm not I, the best conversation partner. I, I I think Star speaks up. Well, at least the uh, the vampire is dealt with, and uh, I seem to not have any uh, vampiric magic on me, according to Tordek. Hey, Lass is clean as a whistle. That's reassuring to hear, though, with night falling and the companion's light dimming, you must be uh, wary of further threats now. <sighs> Unfortunately, I have been unable to identify the exact nature of what seems to have taken the villagers. Given my research into this commune, there were a fair 40 or so uh, inhabitants amongst ten or so families, and that's not even including the uh, seasonal workers. They all seem to have disappeared. Perhaps some ran off. A few may have escaped, but there's no way to tell. Well, I could say for one thing, uh, it started at the barn, because the house next to it was trying to fortify Hence, why there was so many mm, forceful entries. Tordek, you might be able to ID the vampire, or help somebody else do it. What? What you mean? Well, that that vampire in the field wasn't naked, and you have the maze. Hmm. I see. Maybe. I'm just, just saying the identity might might help. Yeah. Well, can confirm uh, whatever it was that survived and later brought down by Star here seemed to have been higher up in this here church. A clergyman, you say? I... Did they have any vestments or markings upon them? They had... It seemed standard uh, priest attire, nothing... You're getting some fancy. interference, Cookie. I don't know if, if that's like your end or my end. Uh, it might be my end. I had to switch over to a different means of audio to let my headphones charge up. You got some crunch happening. Yeah, it's the headphones. It'll okay. clear up in just a minute. All right, cool. Sorry. Continue. I wouldn't say that he was uh, dressed to the nines, but seemed pretty normal for a clergyman. There was also this, pulling out the maze and setting it down on an altar. Mm -hmm. And Star, you know that the, the dude had something else on him. Mm. I... I suppose I should... Oh god, did I die again? Can anybody hear me? Yes. Crap, I died again. Okay. Welp! Da-da-da-da-da-da! Can anybody hear me? Yes. You can hear me, but I can't hear any of you. Okay. Give me a second. And that would be why. Because I'm fixing to get kicked in again. Okay, good. Perfect. Do, do, do. 
God, it is not a good day to record stuff, that's for sure. Even local recording is, is not behaving. And it's about that time when, when things usually die the hardest. <sighs> Very sorry, everyone. I'll get this sorted out as soon as I can. As soon as I can. I just don't know the best way to do that. Wow, it's letting me switch rooms, but it's not letting me hear or speak. It's not connecting properly. I'm gonna restart my Discord. One second, friends. Hopefully one second, anyway. tab over here in the meantime we can look at this awesome splash screen because it is one of pb's better ones that's for sure if i can get yeah. any connection at all There's also the huh, we'll, we'll we'll get back in thank you all for your patience especially on patreon because this is supposed to be your patreon show but we'll we'll see might have to cut it here and pick it up uh, in a little bit, because this is completely down, unfortunately. I can't even get back into Discord currently, so uh, there might be two videos. I'm just going to cut it right here uh, for now, and uh, when my internet improves, we'll, we'll pick it right back up. So uh, one second, uh, but for, for your perspective anyway. <laughs> 